The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Episode of Tumor's Town. I'm your host, Al Tuma. And tonight, we're going to get into it. I have my arch emesis, nemesis here, um, the venerable Mr. Lionel Dalton. How are you doing, man? What's Yo, what's on? up? What's up? Some <laughs> arch enemy. God, we we best the best of friends, brother. The, the, the right hand, the left hand. You always push another. You you never agree with anything, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, man. So what's going on with it, man? How uh, you been? What you said? It's been two weeks since we've been up here. It's been a minute, man. I've been good out here hitting these stages, same routine, and, you know, yeah. I'm still, you know, fighting to get rich out here. That's all. Yeah, well, you know? you're doing a pretty good job with shit. Did you go vote yesterday? Oh, yeah, uh, man, you know, yeah, I voted, man. You know, I did it. For who? That's that's for America. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I vote for America. <laughs> right, so huh. almost said. Well, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, this is like the. 20th, you didn't? No, I didn't. Okay, it's like the twenty fifth straight year that I have. Mm. So you know, I, I hope for people to, to win, but yeah, I don't go wait no time standing in line, pushing no card and nothing like that. Man. <laughs> Now, if you was running, I'd go vote. If somebody I knew personally, no, personally, I'd go, yeah, I'd go do that. But uh, I just, I'm not it. So uh, yesterday it was record numbers of people coming out uh, as a backlash to you know, I, Donald Trump and everything. I mean, black yeah. people went out in big numbers and, and they put and it out. Go, yeah, they went out. They, they yeah. went against him, man. I just, you know, question I have: Do do Asian people vote? I ain't never seen Asian folks at a voting uh, poll. I've never even thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, that's a good question, man. Do do you know? Because I I don't see them voting, man. I mean, they, if they, I, I guess in their own country, man. Because if they voted over here, they, they man, there's billions of them motherfuckers. So I, I mean, maybe they don't let them. We talking about them trying to restrict us from voting, but, but I'm maybe sure, they stop them. But I'm quite sure that you know a lot of them is born here too. Like yeah, Asian foods is born here. So, you know. Once you born here, man, you pretty much know. You're American, so you're exactly. allowed to vote. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. Sometimes I just be thinking, man. I really, because I'll be looking at the Asian folks, man. They really like, <laughs> they skate through, man. They don't really bother nobody. Think about it. You they ain't out marching and protesting. No, <laughs> doing and they out here living their best life, man. Yeah. And we out here fighting for, you know, kibbles and bits. I'm just, I'm just, America, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm just thinking out loud. I'll be sitting home. Brainstorming, like I've never seen Asian folks at a gas station. Where, they get, where they get their gas at? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just thinking, baby. I mean, I never even thought about it. You, never seen, you damn sure ain't seen a homeless one, right? You don't see homeless Asian folks. You don't, you don't see them at the gas station getting gas. And I know, they, I know they all don't drive uh, uh, electric cars. <laughs> I'm just. God. I'm just, I just be sitting back thinking to, I be thinking about stuff, man. Uh, you don't see Asian funerals? Where they burying these Asian folks uh, at? Man? I ain't seen an Asian funeral home. You know, I think we eating them, man. Where's the Asian Grandpa? cemetery? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> 
I never seen Asian cemetery. No, no. What are these things I've never even thought about. I'm quite sure if you go down town, Korea town. Or... I used to live in Korea town. I just it's all Mexicans over there, but I'm just. I just be thinking about some shit, man. I never seen Asian folks vote, so I just, <laughs> just, just want to ask America if y'all was in y'all, you know, in lines at the poll, was it an Asian brother or sister there? Voting? They probably don't even vote with us, man. Damn, they might like, like mail these shit in. I mean, can you vote online now? Do you have to go go I to think, the poll? No, get... I think you got to go to the poll. Yeah, because if you can do it online, you know, people be doing that. Well, they say that's how Trump got his first time. So I'm with some mm. goddamn shenanigans going on with the uh, Russia. I don't believe in all that. I like that, that shirt, man. That shirt cool, man. Yeah, we well, appreciate that, man. And if we had some pieces, we could play some chess on this motherfucker. <laughs> Chuck it <or> something. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, hey, man. What else is going on? We'll get back to this voting thing late, late, later and shit. And I'm, I'm really pushing through tonight, man. I'm, I'm here, feeling I'm here about as bad through, as I look, I'm but I gotta I'm come help, up here. I'm gonna help you get through it, man. <laughs> I'm, gonna help, I'm gonna help you get through it. We got a little technical difficulties getting here today. Oh pitfalls. yeah, them goddamn dogs, man. I'm telling them motherfuckers better be glad that I had to come in and do this show because I'd, I'd have caught them. Man. And sold them. Two pit bulldogs was outside, ladies and gentlemen, as we was coming in here tonight. Mm, loose. Yeah. They was, they was worth three, four, five thousand dollars. But <laughs> he was scared of them. I'm thinking man, about how I can uh, catch these motherfuckers and throw them on goddamn oh, fucking Craigslist. Loose dogs, man. Mm-mm. Man, a dog is just like, it, 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 I had some, like I said, I told you I had some for them. Nigga, I, I, you throw the motherfuckers, I throw them a piece of chicken. You, the dog is a, is a sellout for food. I don't Ooh, give a fuck how right. violent oh, he is. You had chicken with you? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I got grew up with me. I had oh, something okay, to keep okay, him okay. off okay. my head. Okay, there it is. Sellout <laughs> for food. But then, too, they stray dogs. I mean, in hood, stray dogs, motherfuckers understand stray dogs in the hood. Man, them motherfuckers go out and get there. Yeah. So, question I have for you, uh. When your next show, how you been performing? Not, man, as far as hitting the clubs up, I'm getting back to that because I'm working on doing like two or three more goddamn <clears throat> CDs to get out there on fucking serious radio and everything. But as far as the club, man, I've earned, dude, I, I do better off staying at home in my goddamn mirror. And with, with the way technology is today, just the, the get up of going out and going on stage and throwing out materials that motherfuckers might goddamn fucking pilfer from you and everything. It's, I just. Yeah, I just, just don't like the 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 idea of it. Not yeah, it. right. It's a whole it's a whole different world of comedy, man. And I don't like I said all the times before how I see these Instagram guys just getting all these followers, man. And they just go on tour, and I'd be like, God, man, I I just, just, man don't, don't, don't just do what they do. That, that, that's a beautiful thing. Cause if that's where we are right now, you can't be mad at them. Hate on that, man. You, you can say, damn, I'm I'm. I'm, I'm I'm a, like a hybrid. I know about the old school, but damn, these little young motherfuckers that nobody know nothing about, if they show you that they can do that, that means you can do it too. No, you just would be I, diligent with that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a different craft, you know. It's it's just different craft, different art form, man, you know. Yeah. You know, I just, I just, it's nothing like that stand, that stage, man. It's not no, like it that ain't. grind, you know. Nah. It's nothing about that, wow, I put in these dudes. Yeah. To get what I'm, to get where I'm getting now, you know. Yeah. In front of a live audience, yeah, yeah it's but like it, man. yeah, but you got to read that this is a live audience, dude. We are right. here now, ain't no audience out there. But at the end of the day, you could reach more, more. You ain't gonna never be sitting. You there's no goddamn comedy club or venue that got stadium hold a few thousand. But mm. man, you sit here and do your comedy, and you can shoot that shit out to millions. Just but like you, that, huh? yeah. But it, and, and, and you got to be really goddamn precise at doing it because you ain't getting no feedback from no audience. You no. just got to know what works and expect that when they see it, that it's funny. You got to know you funny. Mm. So this shit, man, is um, so it's many, scary. So but many it, ways now, man, you know, to be discovered from just yeah. like comedy. You know? Yeah. Ain't nobody stopping you. Like I said, when I asked you outside, who was your agent? You said God. Yeah. And that's the best said, agent you could have. God is my agent. Manager, you know, I always, everything. I always say that, man. God is my agent, man. You know. Yeah. That's the best one you can have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what you think about the Lakers, man? How they doing, man? I expected them to start out uh, about like they're doing, but they, they'll pull it together. Everywhere LeBron went, man, motherfucker, they will be better than they have been the last five years. That's oh, for, for damn sure. For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they finally got blowed out 
couple of games ago. That was the first time they got blowed out. They just got to find a way to play defense. It's something about that damn Golden State, man. God, man, ain't nobody, the only thing going to beat them niggas is, the, is themselves. And next year, Clay Thompson or uh, uh, Kevin Durant, you can't, the, the, the only good thing for the rest of the league is they can't pay all of them. Because if I was Clay, uh, like Kevin Durant saying, nigga, I'm, I can win another championship, but I'm right. seeing motherfuckers I know ain't good as me right. getting 200 million, 250 million. So I'm going to want that and I'm going to go get that. Clay Thompson going to be that way. I mean, they gonna, you can't pay all these motherfuckers. Mm. That's what destroyed mm. all teams. That's what destroyed the Lakers. Uh, that's what, for, let's go with Jordan and then Chicago. Mm. After they won them six championship, man, the owner's like, man, I'm not paying all you motherfuckers $30, 40 million ah. dollars. Fuck a championship. Right, right, right. Shaq and Kobe, both of them motherfuckers wanted 50 million. It ain't worth I just, it. I just can't see how that guy, Steph Curry, shoot the basketball like that. Because he practices it. Like you practice a joke, man. That man. boy got them and got them took got them fucking think, fifty I foot think, jump shot. I think shot. that's a gift from God, man. You can't practice that. Yeah, you can. That is a gift right there. Yeah, you can. Hell, his daddy was a goddamn marksman. All you gotta right. do is goddamn you. You practice that shit, and that's what he's he's doing. Man, I thought Larry Bird was the best jump shot shooter ever. Tell this little boy. I ain't see all that, man. I ain't, there's a whole lot of motherfuckers. I mean, I give Bird his credit, man, and, and all of that, but I ain't I'm starting the team. I ain't even the billet around Larry Bird. Larry Bird might not even be on my third string. Who you? What? Larry Bird was a beast. He was. Come on, man. Okay, well, if you can get your top five, my top five players? NBA players. NBA player. I guarantee you got them, and I match mine up with yours and anybody else. All right, my top five. Yeah. Michael Jordan. All right. Magic Johnson. All right. We agree on them. That's the guards. We definitely agree on them. Uh, Wilt Chambers. Wilt Chambers. Yeah. All right. Uh, Wilt Chambers. Uh, God, yeah, you Kareem, gotta go Kareem, with the forwards. Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but like, Wilt is a forward now. I said you can't. You go up to fucking two seven foot motherfuckers. Hey, he actually said my top five. Uh, yeah, and and give me uh and, and give me uh, uh uh my man from Boston uh Boston uh what's my what's the what's the power forward from Boston? Mikhail. No nah, hell no, not no Mikhail. I, I think was he a center too? No, Paris was Boston said you if you talking about back in the eighties. No, I'm talking about back in the sixties. God damn, you don't know which one of Bill Russell. Bill Russell. All right, you got that, man. But That's my five right there. Magic at the point, Jordan at my shooting guard, mm-hmm. Kareem is my center. Then I got Tim Duncan at fucking the power forward and I got LeBron at small forward. The forwards I always that goes. I used to have Barkley on it, but you can't go wrong with you know Tim yeah. Duncan and LeBron. But nigga, if I got Magic, Jordan, and Kareem, mm. woo, ooh, come on, mm. shit, shaking bake. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm all right. I'm gonna bring this up, right? I respect LeBron James. Yeah. I, I just LeBron to me is not better than Kobe Bryant. In a lot of ways, he is. He just don't have the mentality of a Kobe or or a Jordan or a motherfucker that's just going to take over LeBron. Can I you mean, see your face? Are you blocked? Are you, you good? Okay. Oh, back there doing playing <laughs> tic- Outside. <laughs> playing tic-tac-toe or something. Right. I don't so... Yeah, he, 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 he's an unselfish player, man. That's like magic. I mean, if you play with guys on the playground or, or in high school, wherever you play that, man, you like playing with a motherfucker like LeBron as opposed to playing with somebody like Kobe or Michael Jordan. And a motherfucker says, just give me the ball, motherfucker. You go rebound and play defense. I'm doing don't, all the shooting. But you don't get a lot of championships like that because here's because when you when it's like Magic got five played in nine out of twelve years. Magic, but Magic, but LeBron ain't no Magic though. No, he ain't. I ain't, you know, but I'm just LeBron, saying. When it when it's clutch time, when it's like five seconds on the clock, LeBron something he he be looking to pass the ball. Yeah. So that what gets me is that killer instinct, and then I don't think he's. I think he he play off of all like just strength. I don't see he's he's not smooth out there. Kobe was smooth, man. When Kobe shot the ball, it looked effortless. Kobe man. didn't give a fuck, man. And the thing about LeBron is you. 
with him, you, you think about Shaq. How many times you really saw that motherfucker with the ball in the clutch, man? When you do not Shaq, shoot, yeah. He d- you I don't ain't, want you, Shaq with the ball as well in the clutch. He, right. And then LeBron knows that. For some reason, he does not cool. shoot free throws. I'm talking about LeBron oh, yeah. as opposed to why he looked to pass the ball. Because uh, he shows you the shot that shit. The thing is, dude, you standing at the free throw line, nigga, two seconds left. We down by one. You got to hit both of them. Motherfucker don't want to be Kobe, in that position. See, Co- see, that's what I'm saying. Kobe lived for those moments. And Kobe was shooting 80% or more from the free throw line. LeBron, right. like goddamn 50, 60%. So that's worse. what I'm saying. How can they say LeBron's better than Kobe? Look at all the other shit he does. What? Scoring, rebound, assists. You look at this boy's record with every team that he's been in, man, with the exception of his rookie year, he ain't been on no losing team. Jordan started out the first six or seven years, nigga got them 37, 43. Kobe done been on teams that went got them fucking 19 and 57 and all this type of shit. That boy, whether he wins the championship or not, they going to be contending because he makes motherfuckers around him better. If you look at his record since he's been there, Ain't no losing record since it's for his first year, maybe the second after that. Man, boy, got them his team win, got them fucking at least 50 games a year. You know, they was trying to say LeBron started that uh, super team. No, he when didn't. He went over to, when he went over to uh, Miami. He didn't, he didn't start that. You know who started the super team? Who? Boston. Boston started the super team when they got Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and uh, who else they had? Uh... Paul Pierce. That was a super team. Right yeah, it there. was. But shit, even before they in the Lakers. And Rondo. But the Lakers did it, man. The, the, the Lakers had a super team back in the 80s and shit with Magic and goddamn Kareem and fucking James Worthy and anybody else they brought in there. Mm. But I'll tell you, they had one goddamn it. When Shaq and Kobe were there, when they brought in Carl Malone and goddamn Gary Payton. They didn't win anything. They didn't. But they, didn't give, they didn't give them a one year to do it. They was old. But man. I'll tell you who really started the super team fucking America. Who? America with the Olympics. When we the fucking back in the eighties, oh, we went yeah. and lost the goddamn game, and they started letting the pros play. And you got Magic and Jordan and Bird and all these motherfuckers playing so, amateurs. So, so basically, back then they wasn't letting professional basketball. No. Nah. So who was who was let the see? <laughs> this is a regular motherfuckers. They, they it, it, it was motherfuckers in college. You, you normally was a, it's an amateur sport, so you played out of college. Jordan got a goddamn. He already had a gold medal. He played in '84. They used the college kids to do it, but after we lost one time, them motherfuckers went with our best playing on playing yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids that's that was weird. getting the autograph before they even played. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah so America started that shit. Mm. Fuck, you gonna beat fucking thirteen niggas like that? Right. They had who they they had Barkley. Jordan, they Jordan, Carl Malone, David Robinson. I mean, damn. Mike, Mike Mike was out of pocket. Mike was wrong by not allowing Isaiah Thomas to be on that team. Isaiah Thomas was supposed to be on that team, man. He should have been there before John Stockton. But if you don't like a motherfucker, you don't like a motherfucker. Isaiah rubbed a lot of motherfuckers the wrong way. He, just, he rubbed Jordan the wrong way. So he just he just, he just was you know he just was he just played hard. He ain't care. Man, he, he Isaiah like was a straight asshole, bro. Uh, ha, 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 ha. So, you know, that Jordan didn't forget all that shit that he had before he won championship, man. Jordan had to go through Boston and Detroit right. dicked that nigga down like three straight years before he got through. A lot of people don't remember that. And they was foul. They came up with the Jordan rules. They no treated layups. that nigga like a football player, no man. Layups. You come through here, we going to knock the shit out your motherfucking ass. So ain't forget about that. So I don't blame him. So y'all want me? It's either me or Isaiah, and you see what they chose. And they would have won the goddamn fucking Olympic without Jordan. But Magic wanted him on the team. That was you know he had AIDS then. Mm. A lot of motherfuckers questioned whether they they should have even had him on the team. Mm. But he wanted Mike Bird. He wanted to play with all of them. So Magic pretty much got his way. Magic, my mom loves Magic. I don't know nobody who don't like Magic Johnson. My mom loved Magic. I mean, when I first moved to LA, I was I was in the Valley. My first, probably my first week out here, yeah. and I went to uh, Magic Johnson Gym, mm. and Magic was there on the treadmill. No, he was on the bike, just pedaling, working out. I walked into the gym. He seen me. I seen him. Magic gave me one of the biggest smiles ever. Every time I met him. And yeah. when I tell you, he smiled and spoke to me like I knew him. Like yeah, he knew that's me. That's the way he do it, man. I was like, hold up. That's magic. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, so that was my. It was like walk. That was my welcome to L.A. right there, man. From yeah, Magic man. Johnson, he's man. always been like that. Right, I Magic mean, that is. Motherfucker that just down gotta to love earth. him, man. Yeah. Yeah. That motherfucker came out and he said, yeah, the he said, I cried just like a whole lot of <laughs> motherfuckers. cried too. I thought he's finna die. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love Magic, man. M- much respect to that brother, man, you know. Yeah. But the Dodgers, uh, the Dodgers got to get right, man. I think the Dodgers, they did the same stuff they did last year. They put the age, and I don't got nothing, listen, I don't got nothing against Asian folks, man. I'm just saying, you man. They, they <laughs> listen, listen man. The second they, time you didn't mention them I'm just letting you know, they put the Asian <laughs> guy in the game last year, and he did the same shit. Yeah. And he did it this year. Those white guys, man, they got hard when they seen him. They was like, oh, shit. And they, come on. Yeah. Like, that's, I was just sad. I'm like, come on, man, you don't. Take, you don't put a cold guy in the game like that, man. He just wasn't ready, man. He need to be off the team. Yeah, he need but to be out they, of there. they got this. They, they um, shit. They got to score runs. I mean, when when they got them lost that game when they was up four nothing, man. Right. I knew it was over. Yeah, but they but, just went nineteen in in the game before. You up four nothing, and then the seventh inning, motherfuckers just put nine runs up on y'all. It's like y'all fried. Well, they went up five four, and then they took the kid out. Then they put the Asian went guy in. Yeah. Then they just had a uh, field day. Yeah. Field day. So I'm like, you know. Was he just Magic got his hand in there too? He pulled yeah, on it. So and he's the him. general manager of goddamn the Lakers. Right, and right. And Luke Walton don't get his shit together with before this, the end of this month. You know what? That motherfucker gonna be about it. I'm not a fan. I was never a fan of Luke Walton. I understand he got everything because, that, because of, you hate when people say that? I see a lot of people say I'm gonna that. Tell you what, he when Luke was playing ball, man. Hell, he played with Kobe and Shaq. Them got yeah, a couple he got, he got, Luke got a smooth ride his whole career. <laughs> smooth ride from playing basketball. He got free championship rings. <laughs> you know, his daddy balled <clears> out. <throat> Luke, what else Luke got? Uh... Then then he got then he got rings by being assistant coach from Golden State. Yeah, that's now, don't what get they me made wrong. Them think that he could coach when right. he went twenty four and right. old. Don't get me wrong. I think Man. Luke Walton is such a great guy, and I believe he's the type of guy uh, being somewhere at the right time. Yeah, and he's always at the right place at the right time, and he he got rings with Golden State. But him with the Lakers right now, nah, they don't they don't nah. He's, he's not he's not he's not a good coach right now. No, nah, he ain't. <laughs> but um, shit, the, but the owner like him, and that's the thing about it. Jenny Bus, Jerry Bus's son, she well, likes him. She yeah, got like him because he got history. He got history with the you know. And he, don't get me wrong, I believe he's a really nice guy. I believe he's a good guy. Yeah. But I just don't think that he he's the guy for the organ to turn the organization around. He's not that guy. I just don't know whether he's ready for it or not because they just got that man Luke still with thirty six, thirty seven. Right. He just retired. I yeah. think I think they'll give him a if he. If he get opportunity to do two more years, two more years with the Lakers, then I believe that they'll win. Because I, I, I think the kid uh, was a kid from uh, uh, from New Orleans. Uh, who that? Uh, kid, Davis Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis. Yeah, I believe he's coming to the Lakers within the next year or two. He may. So but, but, him, LeBron. It's going to be a problem. Yeah, but there's still a good possibility that Kevin Durant or Clay Thompson coming in next year. Yeah, so he, Durant come here, bruh. I'm telling you, it's a wrap. And people are like, well, why would he leave Golden State? Because I done beat everybody but these motherfuckers. <laughs> Before I left Oklahoma City, he was fucking me around. I'd like to knock they motherfucking ass off. So I can see him leaving, especially goddamn fucking if they, they don't want to pay him because they got to get Steph Curry all his goddamn money and shit. I think Durant they, should be with I think them. they got enough money to pay a couple of them. You ain't got enough money to pay three or four motherfuckers two hundred million dollars, bro. And that's what these motherfuckers going for right now. Because they paying a lot of money out here. Yeah, but you know, mm-hmm. as an owner, you could do it. But and is a championship worth that much? Man. Hell no. Here we already got three. I remember so funny. I seen a girl I was dating uh, yesterday, and I stopped kicking it with her. Then I went to the comedy club, and uh, she was in there with an NBA player. I was like, damn. Broke you up. <laughs> I ain't gonna get her back. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Yo, y'all gotta stop doing that, man. <laughs> man, we, we, man. Y'all mess with these regular comedians and all that stuff. So all of a sudden, y'all wanna go out and mess with these NBA 
you know. Uh, well, you should have still stayed in that ear. Like, nah, nah, that was funny Going as hell. back to me when the nigga right. on the road and fucking I, with somebody else. Right, right, right. He no, no, he, he, he retired, so he ain't going nowhere. He had to stay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't cash out. But he still got right, bros right. all over the country. Right, I try to act like I didn't know who he was. Like, hey, 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 sweet, how you doing? Know? What's up, dog? What's your name, man? What's your name, dog? <laughs> exactly who the mother was. <laughs> like, you ought to be been proud of yourself. She, she was smiling. <laughs> I bet she was. Right, right. right. <laughs> like, no more futons. <laughs> No See, how long ago was no, that? Shit? It, was, it was yesterday. All right. No more full times. Give her three or four months. You'll be through She'll with it. She'll be him. back up. Right. <laughs> Hopefully with some of his cash. Come on back to the full time. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you be bringing some of his bread back. Yeah, man. So anyway, while we on the subject of sports, you see um, Des Bryant just got a job. The same Shout out to Des, man. Picked him up. And um, shit, I hope he go down there and ball out, man. That boy Drew, is a, he's incredible, man. Drew Brees. Drew Brees. Is it. Yes, sir. That little motherfucker know how to do it, man. Yeah, yeah. He he looked like he's he's uh, he's high class, man. Yeah. Uh, on and off the court, man. So, on and off the field, Drew Drew Brees. I think he's I think he's a dope person. Dez, I think this situation right here. I think right now you're gonna see the best of Dez. He will because and he got Dallas in like three or four weeks, nigga. I'm a Dallas fan, but I hope right. that motherfucker. I'm a Cowboys fan too. So that's why we. That's why man. we click, man. <laughs> we also See? Capricorn. Ah, damn. <laughs> Capricorn too, man. Right. When's your birthday? December 27th. Mine's January the 4th. Yeah. Capricorn season, man. You know. Yeah, yeah Dez, I think, because he's so humble now. He he, oh, yeah. he he be eating a lot of humble pie, and that's some things you got to go through, man. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, do that, but uh, I don't be embarrassed. They is. he got to go to Dallas in like three weeks with New Orleans. They liable to beat the shit out of us. Mm. I'm motherfucking sure will let me down Monday night, man. I didn't expect that shit at all. No, I kind of stopped watching the Cowboy games, man. From ever since Tony Romo, his his last few years, I stopped watching. <laughs> I stopped. <laughs> I, I, I stopped, man, because it's like, you know, this is how I became a Cowboy fan. I'm from Philly. I became a Cowboy fan. Oh, that's because shocking. Of, I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I still, I like the Eagles. Yeah. And I always want the Eagles to win. But just me as a kid, my favorite player growing up was Deion Sanders. Yeah, So man, I start Deion watching football kind of late. Yeah. You know, I remember like Randall Cunningham and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, uh. All that in Philly. So, don't, I don't hate the Eagles yeah. at all. But just as a kid growing up, yeah. it was like, I seen the boy Deion Sanders, and he gave me, like, confidence. He gave me yeah, swag. Prime time, and swag. Prime time yeah. and all that. So, I was like, oh. So, when I was playing, like, football a little bit, I was like, oh, I want to be like Deion. And yeah. to watch a guy like him play football and nobody would throw to his side. No, he's pick six, nigga. You go there. Right, I just sit home waiting like, no, <laughs> nobody gonna try. I wish I would try. Try. I just thought I was Deion, man. It was it was so dope. So that's uh-huh. how I became a Cowboy fan. Yeah. But then that damn Tony, we got Tony Romo, man. I gave him the first two years, cool. Third year, cool. But then I was like, yo, when he start doing like third down and five yeah. uh, a minute left on the clock, Interception. Yeah, he did some dumb shit, man. Fumble up there in Philadelphia doing, I mean, Seattle doing the playoff yeah, game. Yeah, remember Fumble that? the field goal. Remember that? Fumble the field yeah. goal. What the fuck? I mean, even the catch that Dez Bryant do, which they say wasn't the catch. Nigga, that was, was a catch. It was fourth and six. Yeah. Nigga, you still got four minutes on the clock. He had Cole Beasley and three other right. motherfuckers wide open for the first down. Even they got that touchdown. My- Aaron Rodgers probably would have drove down there. He'd been out there handicapped all day. He probably would have drove right back down the field and bust their ass anyway. But exactly. why don't you go for broke, nigga, on fourth and six? Yeah. And, so he's and, not, he and, wasn't a very smart motherfucker. No, man. And I always used to fight for Tony Romo, man. Like, first, what was you doing out there with the uh, field goal snap anyway? Why is you out there? I have no idea, but he damn sure fucked it up. Right. <laughs> so, so, you see, so you you feel my pain. But he didn't take another one after that. I bet you that. Right. So <laughs> I, I start going to church, man, because of Tony Romo, man. I said, Nah, man, I'm not watching Cowboy. I'm going to church. Because I felt like every time I watched the Cowboys on a Sunday and he they played, gonna let, you down. let me down and that messed up my whole week. Yeah. So I said, let me go to church. And I know when I go to church, that's going to get me right. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm cool, man. I, I try not to watch the I Cowboys. I remember he's in a shootout with goddamn Peyton Manning and shit. Threw over like 500 and some other yeah. yards. And All shit, that. Dude. And the last goddamn moment, that nigga throw the interception down in their territory. It's like, that's, that's Romo. 
That's that, the, everybody. That's what yeah. you do? What you think about uh, Prescott? I think he needs another coaching staff. I mean, and, and I ain't like I. I'm, I'm seeing some things in this goddamn boy, man. And um, I just think he need a like a, a Sean McVay or one of these Kyle Shanahan boys before I could just totally rule him out. It ain't. It, it ain't like he ain't without fault, but I can't judge him on what he got them working with now because they ain't calling the goddamn right play. You know, you know what I feel about uh, black quarterbacks is that we a lot of. When when black quarterback makes it to the Super Bowl or to the big dance or to the playoffs, mm. they turn to pocket quarterbacks, and it's because they listen to the coaching exactly. staff. Exactly. And I feel like as a black quarterback, you know, we're growing up, we're, we we play off. I'm not a quarterback, but I'm quite sure. You yeah, know, I did. Black yeah. folks, we 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 move our instincts and we run. Yeah. And a lot of black quarterbacks is known to be running the ball, scrambling. Yeah, and you get the fuck up out of there. Out of there. So. That's that's like what happened to Cam Newton. Remember that year Cam Newton played mm-hmm. the Patriots. Yeah, and he stayed his ass in a in a in pocket. Yeah, and he lost. Yeah, that's what Des. I mean, that's what Prescott doing. Prescott is is he's standing in the pocket. Yeah, trying to be with you know something that you are not, bro. Like yeah. I say, I played quarterback. I took out running with that bitch. It wasn't nothing there. Right. I'm taking off with it. His first year, he came in running. He was running. He was getting out of there. Yeah, you do that. Play and dude, I'm telling you, you don't see too many black quarterbacks when they run. You don't see them motherfuckers getting laid out with concussions no, and shit. Oh man. When so, you stand back there, motherfucker, ain't no courage in that shit, man, to stand there. Well, I'm going to stand there and drop a dime. Some motherfucker, bam, just knock the shit out of you. Right. Ain't no courage. No, that's stupid. Yes. If you pick up 30 foot, get Michael, out of there. Michael Vick used to tote that motherfucker. But they, they slowly but surely broke him down to the pocket pass. So that's. Yeah, that's he became a pocket pass. Yeah, fuck all that, yeah, bro. Yeah, man, that's not, that's not I'm us. I'm matriculating the ball down the field, right. be it throwing it, handing it to this motherfucker, or running it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. That's not standing here with no courage, getting my fucking head knocked off. I'm not waiting to off. get knocked off. No, we're going to get out of here. We're going to get this first down. We're going to make it happen. Exactly. But. Yeah, so that's what a lot of black quarterbacks do now, man. They 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 when they, they come in the league and they start running the ball, then they get their name up. The next thing you know, once they get dug in, they become pocket quarterbacks. And next thing you know, you don't hear from them no more. Hey, RG three, they, they he fucked his career up like that up there with yeah. Washington. Well, Washington, I think Washington, Washington, uh, they used him too much. They, they they put too much. His first year, they put too much pressure on him. No, it's they been reported that he fucked play. himself up by coming back the next year telling motherfucker, well, you don't, I don't see Peyton Manning running the ball or Tom Brady. I want to be that kind of quarterback. Well, oh, that's what he it, said. Yeah, he wanted to be like them. So it's like, motherfucker, you don't see Tom Brady and, and all these motherfuckers running like you. You know he's still Use playing, your right? strength. He's he on somebody's bent somewhere, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> he played he play for uh he getting a check <laughs> he, he played for Ravens yeah okay and he deep on the bench niggas at the flock or they got that Lamar Jackson boy yeah, there so he won't see no action up there unless somebody get hurt mm. yeah so anyway man like we gonna take a little brief intermission so pull it and get some of her commercials and promos in here cause you didn't do that at the beginning did you I'm going okay. have any promo. All right. We'll okay. Well, we still going to take a little short break here and then get back we'll to it. We'll be break, y'all. We're going to come yeah. back to it. Maybe we show a couple, you know, clips. Oh, seconds. yeah. Get back to you. Yeah. So we're going to do that when we get back in here. So uh, we'll be right back at Tuma's Town with my man Lionel Dalton. I'm your host, Al here. Tuma. And Tuma. we'll be right back. The OGI.
skate and shit, nigga. Yeah, man. He said, you still gonna skate? <laughs> I lose his weight. <laughs> Hell, you lose your damn weight roller skating. What you mean, roller skating is the best workout, man. <laughs> you know that? Look, nah, man, I ain't getting on no damn skates no more, no 49-year-old man. Man, roller skating, man. I love roller skating, man. Where you go? We're on the wheels, right there, on, uh, right off of uh, Pico. We rolling, we jamming, boy. That's a nice place to go catch broads, I guess, man. But I ain't getting on no damn skates. Yeah, I skating just, is the best workout because you working your legs. The best exercise body. you can do is fucking and swimming. And when here, you gonna tell me you gonna burn more calories skating <laughs> Fuck it, than I, fucking man, and swimming? It been a drought for me, man. I don't know what's going on, bro. <laughs> I can't even pay for no vagina, nigga. <laughs> you can't pay no. It must really be damn, bad. Damn, boy, it's going. I don't know what's going on, boy. <laughs> Shit, I've been in. The, I've been in a drought, boy. Well, what's going on? I don't know, man. What are you trying to pick up at? I don't know, man. I just been, I, you know, I just been focusing on comedy, man. I just been on this stage. Well, that's man. what you fucking, nigga. You getting yeah, plenty pussy ass. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Pussy is falling in line when you successful at that. Damn, bro. I know it's everything when, when things ain't going right for me in my professional life, which is just like you say, your quality of pussy goes down. So if it then went down, that means you stay, get back to being successful at what you do. That's right. The best pussy finds you when you're successful at whatever you do. Uh, the, so. best, the best pussy finds you. <laughs> 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 anyway, boy, you got to tell me about some of this stuff you got here. Now. We're going to pull up some of these clips. Oh, tell us about this. Um... I played this preacher, man. Uh, it was it was pretty cool, man. I, I auditioned for this role. And the guy was like, yo, can you, I want you to play a pastor. And I was like, all right, cool. I can do it, you know. And, uh, it's reverend. He, he, yeah, he gave me the monologue. And I was like, oh, shit. This is a lot of model. This is a lot. It was a lot of dialogue. Yeah. And I went home and I just was like, kept going over it, kept doing it, just kept perfecting it, made it my own. So when it was time to do like a table read and, you know, mm. I, I performed it from the whole cast and crew. And it was like, oh my God, it was powerful. So uh. man, when it was time to shoot, when we went on set, we started shooting it. It was funny because the the, the pastor of the church, because we used the real church. Yeah. And the pastor came in, the reverend came in, and he watched me up the church. Yeah. And he was like, oh, my God. Like, people really thought I was a pastor. You you had the look, for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. People, people really thought I was a pastor, man. And mm. so it was fun. I remember when we was on stage, and they had, like, real choir folks. They were the people that was in the background. They was real choir folks. And they didn't, I don't know if they, they just thought, I don't know what they, they didn't never see me perform yet. Yeah. So... Once I started getting into it, it was like, oh my god, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I just committed to that role. Yeah. So what's the what's the name of it? We gonna take a look at a couple. Man, of I don't know. I've been so long, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing so much stuff, man. Uh, what is, what's, what's the name play of that it? Clip. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Jackson and our here. brothers and our fathers that never stood a fair chance in this game they call life. It has to be something greater. And I come here before you today, church, to tell you yeah. there is. Yeah. There is power. Yeah. There is energy. Yeah. And there is a God yeah. that deserves our faith, yeah. not man. After all that can go wrong has gone wrong. We have to lean on everlasting love and hope. Yeah. I said hope, hope that we will see a better tomorrow, yeah. my God. My God. <laughs> he didn't kiss the Bible, Pastor Nixon. <laughs> yeah, man, I was committed, man. I yeah, was, but I, I was committed to that, man. I checked it out, and how that boy was clipping in, um, like uh, social issues of us being gunned down in the street while mm -hmm. you was doing this stuff. Right. So that was real good. And what's his name? Uh, Indian, uh, Indian, yeah. Indian, Indian is the director of the, of it, man. Yeah, yo, yo, he's the director. Indian's real cool dude, man. Yeah. He's, 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 He's a he's a dope writer, man. Yeah, he is. Yeah, actually, he wrote he wrote all, Indian wrote all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wrote all that, man. Now, how much of that do you believe in that you were saying? I mean, when it comes to us, <laughs> how how religious are you? Are you more religious or spiritual or what? Both. I'm spiritual and religious. Uh, everything I everything I said, I I think that was one hundred percent the truth. You uh -huh. know, it's it's I think it's the, it's the truth, man. You know about you know putting the wrong folks in charge of, you know, certain neighborhoods and, 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 you know, 
investing in, you know, putting the money in, in the wrong, you know, areas yeah. in, the, in the community. And, you know, people not really standing up for, you know, uh, African-American men getting gunned down by white police officers. Right. And, you know, we turn the other cheek and, you know, just, you know, we just need folks to fight for us. You know, yeah, and it's like I, I understand. Like a lot of folks come to America, want to hurry up, want to get to America, and you know, immigrants stuff like that want to get. Don't get me wrong; I, I feel like we we are immigrants, you know, because yeah, we are, know, we all are. And I just feel like people run to come here, but not knowing like America's fucked up too. Yeah, you know, we we got a lot of issues here, so a yeah. lot of folks run here and thinking that it's you know it's it's, it's, it's better than where they ran from. Maybe it is, but uh, it's, but I'm just saying it's a lot of issues here too that yeah. need that need to be addressed, man. Right. That need to be you know taken care of. Yeah, but I don't think there's ever going to be a perfect society, no matter where you go. Exactly. Right? Now you've heard about that uh, Ghana and a couple of I think it was some other countries in Africa that has extended visas to us as African American and to celebrate the fourth year of, of, of slavery. And they've offered visas and all this shit. Now, I, I look, I'll look into it, but if I you ain't talking about giving me no reparations and nothing, mm-hmm. come back over there. I mean, I appreciate what you're doing, but as far as me just uprooting and going to I'm an not- entirely different country, even if it, if it is Africa, I mean, how does because immigrants that come over here, especially white ones, do they get set up to do shit. Right. They get land. They get money. It's sad because I... When I when I was when I first moved here, once again, I always get a lot of stories here, man. I was in a barber shop and I met a guy. He was from Ghana, mm-hmm. and I was I was kind of you know happy to see him. Like, hey, how you doing, man? You from Ghana, man? And I said, man, I want to go to the motherland. I want to get there. You know what he said to me? Yeah. It's the African Ghana, man. He said, uh, no, no, no. That's not your home. This your home here. This your hey, home here. Yeah, you meant that. And he meant that, but it was just sad that I was like, yo, like. I want to go to Africa. I want to be accepted. I want to, you know, find out where I come from. And mm. and when I hear it from a guy that's from, born and raised in Ghana, and he come to America, and he tells me, no, no, no. Yeah. That kind of hurt my feelings in a way. Like, damn, we American, African American is not accepted in America, and we're not accepted in Africa. So where, where? I we, don't think he was saying you wasn't accepted there. But until you learn, I'm like, man, if you go over there and take your white man ways over there, brother, motherfucker, but kill you quicker than you. you maybe already that's here. true, but at the same yeah. time, don't tell me well, if I'm excited to get to Ghana to to, to experience it. I just see what's going on. Don't tell me, no, 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 that's well, not your home. Well, what you what I would look at is the fact that he he over here he's from Ghana he he know he's what you trying to get back over there to see he was born there right and he telling you motherfucker you in a better place here than being over there maybe so but at the end of the day just I just feel like he he knocked my vision of wanting to learn mm-hmm. about my you go historic. visit but yeah. you know go visit and check out things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I hear it all the time. I used to hate it when I was younger, be, me being dark-skinned. Man, I see, I, they ain't never told me not to go back. They've always asked me, where you from? You got mm. to the what? And I just like, damn, I gotta, I'm from Georgia. I, I don't know where I'm, I'm from. I could, I could have a whole goddamn fucking hair on my shit over there, and I'm over here in this jungle. Right. I was but um, I used to hate that growing up, man. Nowadays, when they come up to me, I love that shit. Where you from? <laughs> I'm in lady like, where you from? I'm an African lady that asked me yesterday. She, I was in paying my lecture bill. She was like, where you from? And I was like, Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm from Ghana. She said, what part of Ghana? I said, Ghana. She said, no, 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 no. <laughs> she said, no, no, I'm from Ghana. And then I, I went to my phone and I Googled. I started, what part of Ghana? Yeah. <laughs> I Googled. Just tell I said, I'm, I'm, I'm from Cape. Cape Castle, Ghana. I said, no, no, you Google. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's a Nigeria. You Google. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, Uh-oh. man. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm your host, Al Tuma, here with my guest, uh, Lionel Dalton, in another episode of Tuma's Town. And Tuma's Town. We fighting through it, man. So, question out for you. How was it, how was the comedy scene back then when you was coming up when it was like uh you know Robert Harris and Richard Pryor and uh you know just Man, it was it was like a to me Fox. it was a golden era, especially when I started in the nineties, man, because dude, you you to 
Comic View and Def Jam was equivalent to what goddamn social media is now because we didn't have, we we couldn't just go on HBO with our own shit or BET was another thing with Comic View. They, you didn't have that shit then. So it was just like a big comedy boom mm. of shit. So it was, it was real cool. It was a golden era shit. And it was so many damn comedians, man. You just knew that. And that, that 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 the cream would rise to the top. It was just, it was just an overflow of motherfuckers. So, but was it? How was the camaraderie? Like, was it? Was y'all it's together? About the same, man. Was y'all? Was it? He was it hating? Was it? More, you, was it more it was love? Always, man, you motherfuckers fought over stolen jokes and, and and all that type of shit. They said they go they go do that. But um, yeah, it was it was camaraderie with the people you knew. Man, comedians is just like any other goddamn fraternity or group. There's hatred in that group, just like anything else. I feel like. I, I don't know. I just feel like it was more friendlier as comedians growing up helping each other back then than there is now. Nowadays, comedians is not that friendly, man. You know, and you know, I'm I'm only eight years in with the comedy game, and Mm. my experience, my experience, you know, in the comedy game, man, it's like I get more love from like the older comedians. Like the mm. Bill Bellamy, you know, the Mike Epps, yeah. you know, uh, guys like yourself. Mm. Then I get with the younger comedians. It's it's just, it's, it's, it's like everybody's out to, you know, step on each other's toes or outdo yeah, someone. Yeah, well, you don't get that. Not trying to give you some advice or, you know, or even when I first started doing, started stand-up comedy. I remember one comedian, man. <laughs> Uh, what's the, what's the guy name? Uh, he's doing TV shows right now too, man. Uh, Justin Hire, I say his name. I don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> I I remember I remember when I first started stand up comedy, and uh, they had a comedy show down. Uh, what's the guy? What's the stand? What's the guy name for Martin Morris? Uh, Gary Morris. Gary Morris. Yeah, <laughs> had a comedy show uh, downtown, mm-hmm. and I was just starting out doing stand up comedy. I was just starting out, and uh, you know. And Justin was uh, he was he was hosting, yeah. And you know I, it was like open mic little slash show too. And I was trying to get on, and he looked at me. He's like, "You're a comedian," and it was I'm like, "Damn, nigga, just let me. Can I get it? Just let me try." Yeah, you go come across this. You know what I'm saying? It was like, let yeah. me, just let me try. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then as he starts seeing me. Oh, this kid's serious. Oh, yeah, this kid's serious. Yeah, you gotta earn that respect. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and you know, it kind of it kind of hurt a little bit, but I was like, you know, it's cool. But I remember one time he was uh he was on stage and he was having a bad set. It was bad. <laughs> Sting it up. It was know, bad. Fart and all type of quiet bad. farts. And <laughs> he got off stage, and he uh he you know his head was down. Yeah. And I was like, yo, bro. It's going to be all right, nigga. Just, just do you. Keep giving them you. Keep giving them you. Then, you know, he, he, he thanked me for that. Yeah. So I just realized that, you know, no matter how hard, how high you get, no matter who's coming up, always be willing to open the door and, and show love yeah, to well, anybody. Yeah, if you do that. Because you never know. That's what I just about to tell you. You never know Even who's going to be With these little doing. young motherfuckers, you know? man, you control that energy. Right. Because you never know, dude. I mean, I didn't seen Martin blow up, Chris Tucker, Mike. Right, right back. A gang of motherfuckers Everybody. blew up, and I was always friendly with all of them. But right. um, that's that's the way you do that. You don't yeah. let no motherfucker break right, your right, damn right. spirit. And you know he's doing his thing now, man. You all mm-hmm. over television, and you know it's all good, man. You know, so it's just. When's the last time you seen him? I seen him uh, probably like a few, like probably a few months ago. You know, uh. it's just like what's up. That's pretty much it. You know, mm. but trust me, growing up, man, I was coming up out here, man, doing stand up comedy, been tough, man, because it's not like a lot of. Like, it's not a lot of stages to get on in L.A. I learned the hard way doing stand-up comedy coming out here. Yeah. Usually what people do is they, like, if you're from New York City, you take all your bumps and bruises in New York City. So now when you come to Hollywood, you 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 kind of polish. Yeah. You polish now to, to perform at the Laugh Factory and, and get certain deals, get a certain agency. Me, I started, I started stand-up comedy professionally out in L.A. I never yeah, did stand-up comedy started, in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. So out here, it's harder to make it out here doing starting stand-up comedy out here first because you're not that good. Mm-hmm. So now you, you're you at a place where lights, camera, action, people expect for you to be great. Yeah, you and you're getting up balling. on these stages out here and it's like, oh, shit, he's not that funny. Yeah. So I took my bumps and bruises in Hollywood, that's the hardest place ever to take your bumps and bruises because 
everybody's watching. Yeah. Yeah, and Hollywood ain't giving you nothing but chicken wings. Exactly. And that damn it's hard because New York, bro, yeah. over there, even when you struggling, man, you can make fucking three, four hundred dollars right. a night right, right. out here. Nigga, ain't nobody giving you nothing but exposure, a couple of drinks, and chicken wings. Right. And you get your you get your weight up in New York, and uh, also uh, Chicago. I see all the Chicago comedians come out here, man, and they don't mean a lot of them be funny as shit, uh, but they took their bumps and bruises. Out in the shy, then when they come out here, it's like, oh yeah. shit, they kind of polish and season, season yeah. now, season now, you know. So I get it. Yeah, I learned the hard way, so now I'm funny. It's and, the know, best thing. Like, it's equivalent to coming straight out of goddamn high school to the pros. Right. You can't blame that's exactly that's what happened. Exactly I came straight what, out of high that's school. That's what I did. Straight to the pros. Uh, L.A. It was the pro. Yeah, uh, that's what I did. Yep. So I didn't perform over in Georgia, man. I started right out here. Robin Air is the first man to bring me up on stage. Wow. Right down the street there at the Comedy wow. Theater, and that was Black Hollywood, bro. Mm. So, and um, it, it was cool. I so, mean, wow. <laughs> I bombed that night, but um, he didn't think so. It was like, you got a distinct voice. Just practice, 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 and keep doing it. You That's what he said up. to you. Yeah. Wow. And I say to a lot of comedians, man, you coming to Hollywood, man, make sure you got your jokes. Make sure you got your, your 15 minutes, make 20 sure minutes. you had your money right, nigga, because this place is littered Woo! with motherfucking dreams Woo! and people sleeping in tents and shit. I was one of them, man. I was so homeless. Mm, like on. Red Fox got them said, nigga, you tell any strong young comedian coming out here, motherfucker, make sure you find a job near food. Mm. It's much easier to be goddamn funny when your belly is feel full as opposed to being hungry. Man, I was homeless out here multiple times, man. I'm talking about when I well, I was fortunate when I first moved out here, I had got me an apartment in Koreatown. Mm -hmm. And it was all Mexicans and then it was a uh, uh, MS thirteen Mexicans and they was killing each other. And I remember them motherfuckers. Right. Man. So I was like, I didn't know I was in the damn game, navy, game related neighborhood. You know, you, and they you was, wouldn't sacrifice. No. <laughs> and I'm like, where I'm from, Philly, it's like, you know where the game, you know where the, where the, we don't got games out there, but it's like, you know where the drama's coming from. You know who did what, why did they do this, who's about to come around, look for this guy. You pretty much know it. it's in the air. Mm -hmm. I'm in a motherfucking neighborhood where I don't know nobody, ain't nobody speaking English, and they just coming around just killing motherfuckers. Ain't nobody on the block hustling. Ain't gonna do that shit for initiation, bro. That's Man, what I'm see. saying. Ain't nobody on the block. Ain't nobody hustling. Yeah. Ain't nobody getting no money out there. Y'all just killing motherfuckers, and I didn't understand it, so I moved from the neighborhood. What was you over there near Mac on the Park somewhere? Yeah, I was on San Marino in, uh, you know, in Vermont. I was running that way. Okay. And it was just like, I was like, damn. It got real when I, I came home one day and somebody got their head blown off in front of my building. And I had to climb three gates to go in my crib from the backyard. <laughs> I had to go through the crib from the backyard, man. I called my landlord. I said, fuck that. I'm out of here. <laughs> they said, all right, well, we're going to move you to another building. They moved me a, the fuck around the corner. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm out this neighborhood. I'm walking down the street, coming to the comedy store, and niggas shooting no, I'm, yeah. I'm gone. Oh, man, I just definitely dealt with that yeah. shit. Nigga. I don't know. I can't tell you how many bodies I done stepped over but I don't got them prints on the man. And it wouldn't in the news. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I've literally stepped over bodies. And they get these police, everything right. is out there, but it ain't in the news. They, they put what they want to put in the news. And I'm like, damn. But what got me was that y'all still hanging out in front of the building. This yeah. nigga, whoever's coming around here, they not missing. Y'all still hanging here? <laughs> nigga, not me. I'm out of here. <laughs> they was, I walk out the building. They still here. Hey, hey, my friend. No, nigga. I'm not your friend. I'm out of here. I'm gone. <laughs> See you later. I ain't been back to the neighborhood yet. Uh, <laughs> so I was so I was so that kind of got me homeless. Very was, fortunate, man. man I'm, fortunate, niggas, I'm man. telling you, bro. Some of these areas out here got God got man. some over you, bro. Cause I'm telling you, right. them niggas not that all games don't do that. But them MS-13 motherfuckers, they known for that shit. Man, I got banged on the other day out here. I had the red sneakers on. I think I told you before. I had the red sneakers on. I was over in Washington Boulevard. And the first time I ever been banged, I was going to the damn laundromat. Yeah. I leave out the laundromat, put my clothes in the dryer, go get some need, come back. I see these motherfuckers doing a video shoot at the laundromat. I'm like, damn. All these crip motherfuckers. I'm like, all right, man, I got to get my sneakers, man. I said, no, I said, I got to get my clothes. So I go, so soon I get in the line, the parking lot, the right. dude was like, where are you from? In my mind, I was like, <laughs> in my mind, I was like, nigga, I'm a grown ass fucking man. What you mean where I'm from? Right. But my heart says something else. My heart said, 
West Philadelphia, born and raised <laughs> in the playground where I spent most of my days. Yeah, common he's, sense kick in. Yeah, he starts singing with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know Will Smith? Yeah, nigga. Yeah, baby. Yeah, so, oh, you shit, know. man. Hell, look at time going by. You said we got to get more time up in. We do. And they got all, all ready to creep by. So. We got to get my man our energy back going, man. You know. Uh, take, take this medicine today, yeah, man. I, I took the last work. two weeks off, so I had to come do today to fight through it. But I'm, I'm just bereft of energy. Just... Well, we can go skate tonight. Yeah, no? please. <laughs> Damn, you got the moves. How oh, you still can do? You gonna rub your legs? He rubbed his legs. <laughs> man, I ain't getting on no skateboard or none of that bullshit. And what's up with these look at these new they, all these look at them little mini cycles they putting right? on the corner? Yeah, yeah somebody right. you can put your credit card in there and move on down the street. I'm not. Come on, I don't ride that shit for free. But I'm just going. They, they just they putting them on every corner now. You ain't tried yet? No. I'm getting on no shit like that. I ain't getting on nothing, man. My feet, if I ain't driving a car or a truck or something, I'm not fucking with it. I ain't getting on no mini back, no motorcycles, no nothing. Mm. I'll just walk. I don't need to I get nowhere that fast. Been, I'm, not, I'm just not going to keep putting my credit card into stuff. No, that's not. Yeah. I mean, what do they say? You put it in there and it's like a dollar as soon as you do it and it's 50 cent every minute. Oh, my God. It's just robbing <laughs> you, man. Just that's to just ride down, money. just to scoop down the block. Free money, man. <laughs> Hell they, no. they put those crack, those drones in the, in the crack kid neighborhood. <laughs> we be popping them up. They putting them in here, but it ain't like nigga, you can steal one of them motherfuckers. You can't really do nothing with it. With it huh? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, man. We need uh, to pause today, man. All right, next week. Yeah, uh, but let them know so where to reach you at and everything. Uh, and I'm here, Lionel Dalton. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, you know, Facebook, L I O N E L L D A L T O N. Watch out for the new movie come out this. Summer this year, uh, actually this fall, uh, Compton Finest. Compton you can catch me in Compton Finest. All righty then. I'm your host, Al Tuma. You can reach me, Al Tuma 2, at any of these motherfuckers Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, any of that. It's Al Tuma, the number two, at whatever. And we're here at Mars Media with the lovely host, the, the host, uh, the owner and entrepreneur of this place, Miss Portis Morris, Portis. back there. We ain't said nothing to nobody, but we here at Morris Media as we are every Wednesday. Thank y'all for tuning in and bearing with me on this illic ass night that I've had to go through this book. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm sitting up here half dead, but I had to come in here and say something to y'all. We did it tonight. So thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. <laughs>